Just like a mechanic uses different tools for fixing specific parts of a car, and an artist may use a different brush for creating a certain look in a painting, chemists carefully select the tool they are going to use based upon what they are doing. Selecting the most appropriate piece of equipment to make a measurement is one of the most important things you can do to reduce the amount of error in an experiment. For example, if you need to measure out 2.4 grams of a substance, you would not want to choose a balance that measures out to the nearest gram. You would want one that goes out to the nearest tenth of a gram. So come on this journey through the chemistry lab where we are going to see what types of equipment it would take to make a saltwater solution and then measure its density. Our first stop is a common piece of equipment, a balance. A balance is used to determine the mass of a substance. Oftentimes you would first measure a substance's mass, then react it with something, and then measure its mass afterward. Balances come in a large variety, and it's best to be sure you're measuring with one that has the precision necessary for the experiment. For example, if you have a small amount of powder you're measuring, you would probably want to use a balance that measures out to the nearest hundredth or thousandth of a gram. If you're measuring the mass of a large amount of a liquid, you may only need a balance that measures out to the nearest gram. For our hypothetical experiment, we're going to measure out 58.4 grams of solid sodium chloride, or salt. So we would need to use a balance that measures out to the nearest tenth of a gram. Once we measure it out, we notice that the salt has large chunks, and it may take a while to dissolve to make our solution. If you ever need to grind a substance into a fine powder, you would want to use a mortar and pestle. This will increase the surface area on our solid by breaking it up into smaller particles and again allow us to dissolve it into solution a lot quicker. Next we will put our salt into a beaker, add some water, and stir to dissolve the salt to form a solution. Beakers also come in many shapes and sizes and they usually have volume markings on them. You should never use them to make a precise measurement though. The volume markings should only be used as approximations. Beakers are used for mixing, stirring, heating, and pouring liquids. While we are stirring the salt and water, we notice that some of it splashes out on the sides. We don't want to lose any more of our solution, so we're going to transfer it to a better piece of glassware for the job, the Erlenmeyer flask. The Erlenmeyer flask has a narrow neck, so it's often used for containing and mixing solutions. It's very convenient to dissolve solids using these because the narrow neck allows you to swirl the liquid without worrying about it spilling or splashing out. Okay, now our salt is completely dissolved in the water we added, but we would like to make a 500 milliliter solution. The best piece of glassware for this job is the volumetric flask, which is used for preparing standard solutions. The bottom is great for dissolving or mixing liquids, and the narrow neck is perfect for the precise measurement of a liquid. We start out by pouring our concentrated salt solution from the Erlenmeyer flask into the 500 milliliter volumetric flask, and then filling it up to the line on the neck. What we have created is a 2 molar salt solution. We'll get to molarity in a later lesson. Now we just need to determine the density of the solution. As you may remember, density is equal to mass divided by volume. Just like in a kitchen, you probably wouldn't stir up your cake batter in a measuring cup. In a chemistry lab, there are certain pieces of glassware for mixing and reacting, and certain pieces for measuring. We are going to need to use the best piece of equipment for measuring the exact volume of my solution. We have a couple of choices. First is the graduated cylinder. The graduated cylinder comes in many different sizes and is a very good tool for measuring the volume of a liquid. The size you use is dependent upon how much liquid you're measuring. For example, you wouldn't want to measure 50 milliliters of water with the 500 milliliter graduated cylinder if you have access to a 50 or 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. 
An even more precise instrument for measuring the volume of a liquid is the burette. The burette is used for precisely measuring the volume of a liquid. Because it is so narrow, it has the capability of measuring down to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. It has a little nozzle at the bottom for dispensing small amounts of liquids, and it's used in titrations when precision is important. We are going to use the burette to measure out 10 milliliters of our salt solution, and then place this 10 milliliters of salt solution on a balance which reads 11 grams. The density of our salt solution is calculated as mass, which is 11 grams, divided by volume, 10 milliliters, which is equal to 1.10 grams per milliliter. Now, just for the fun of it, we're going to evaporate the water from the solution and retrieve our salt. Often in a laboratory, you may be separating a liquid from a solid in solution, so you'll want to evaporate the liquid using an evaporating dish. Evaporating dishes are very shallow and provide a lot of surface area for the liquid to turn into a gas, leaving the solid behind. The evaporating dish can be heated to speed up the evaporation process. We could use one of two things to heat our salt solution, a hot plate or a Bunsen burner both of which are used to heat a substance. When dealing with substances that are highly flammable, it may be better to use a hot plate than a Bunsen burner, as the Bunsen burner uses a flame for heating. When using a Bunsen burner, you'll need something to hold the evaporating dish over the flame. For this, we will use a laboratory support stand, or a ring stand, which is exactly what it sounds like. It is a support for your equipment, so you don't have to hold it. You can attach different types of clamps to it, for example, test tube or thermometer clamps. We are going to attach a ring to it so it can hold our evaporating dish. If we were going to need to heat our salt to an extremely high temperature, maybe if we were going to melt the sodium chloride, we would need to use a crucible. A crucible is a container that has the ability to be heated to very high temperatures and it may be used with or without a cover. Probably the most common piece of glassware that comes to mind when you think of the word chemistry is test tube. They come in all different sizes and they're used for containing different substances and carrying out reactions. They don't usually have marks on them so they're not used for measuring. We could have also poured our salt solution into a test tube and using test tube tongs or a test tube clamp and ring stand heated it over a Bunsen burner flame. One final piece of equipment that I need to mention is the desiccator. The desiccator is used to keep a sample dry. It contains a chamber at the bottom which holds a moisture absorbing substance. If you are dehydrating something you may want to store it in here between trials or overnight so your substance doesn't rehydrate from the moisture in the air. <laughs> This is just a short list of several of the many pieces of equipment you would find yourself using in a chemistry laboratory. Keep in mind that it is important to know which piece of equipment to use so potential error is reduced and your experiment is successful.